G'day again. Apologies first, I was going to put layout and styles in this one video, but I just couldn't do it. Sorry! When I started my apprenticeship, the layout medium we used was to rub the job with plasticine or play-doh in some parts of the world, then dab some talcum powder onto it. This produced a film that a pencil would leave a distinct line in, and the pencils had to be extra soft, either 5 or 6B, so they wouldn't scratch the surface. It was a bit weird for a 15 year old boy to be playing with a powder puff, and I copped some flack from my mates, but eventually became accustomed to it. I just realised why I did so well with the young ladies. I smelt like baby. Pretty straight. A skill all engravers have to master is this. It's quick, easy and convenient. It becomes somewhat redundant when the item is rather high and some engravers used flexible rulers to draw lines which I found to be bloody hard to get right. Sometimes with straight edged items you could use a compass but if you didn't keep it perfectly perpendicular to the job it'll turn out all over the place and certainly doesn't work for grapevine edged ice buckets. For those of you who can't master the fingernail line out technique just put your height of your lines down the centre line then mount a pencil in a vise and simply spin the work across it. When these pens became available in about 1980, the engravers took to them like flies to you know what. Gone were the days of knocking the powder all over the floor creating a slip hazard. These pens do have their limitations. If you don't get the pen almost vertical to the job, the ink won't flow. Where an item is too high to make a suitable line, I use the vice trick. This saucepan just happened to be about the right height. Another great trick to get a high definition layout is to rub silver polish over the job and let it dry. This looks similar to the plasticine and powder method. A mini vise is great for low items, but my main method for many years is to use a swivel vise. Any will do as long as you can point the pin over the tape. And as for low items, just prop them up a bit higher. All engravers avoid arcs where possible, but if the customer is insistent, we've got to figure out ways to do it. On a silver plated or slippery surface, I put three coats of tape, any tape, so I've got an anchor for the compass. When the pivot point is miles away from the object, I use this little trick. I use whatever is available to, to get the, uh, the height of the point of the compass to about the height of the object. Oh, do you bloody mind? Get out. Shoo. Get. Go on, get out.
If this was an expensive silver cup, of course I'd wrap the brick up. <laughs> And there you go, I've appeased yet another fussy customer. Grrr. Hello! Trying to get lines square to centre on round objects is always a bit of a challenge. But this is how I do it. First, put a centre line and then just scratch in where your inscription lines are going to go. This is only approximate at this stage. You'll notice as I go down the line, I change my mind and put a bit more space in between lines as I go. I'm lining the protractor up with uh, the top mark and the 90 degree. The lower lines I just flip the protractor over upside down. Now I go back and extend all the lines that need to be extended. There's many ways to transfer an image onto metal, but i found that if I get a logo that's a weird shape and I can't do by hand, I'll photocopy it and then cut a piece of carbon paper and try and slip it in underneath. Which doesn't always work. And if it doesn't, I'll just pull it up slip the carbon in and that solves the problem. This is just a piece of dowel with an old uh, burr stuck in it that's got a rounded point on it. You could also use a ballpoint pen. I usually get a better result than this. I think the carbon paper's gone off. Does carbon paper have a use by date? With high, narrow or generally awkward objects where there's no space for anchor fingers, I'll use whatever's available to bring the pad up level with the object. Where's that brick? This provides comfort and stability. If there's engraving at the front, you can put the item around to the front of the stack. And with higher items, you just stack more. That work zone box finally come in handy for something. One of the main dramas a customer brings to my indifferent concern is which side of mug should be engraved handle left or right. Well after a few decades of asking is the recipient left or right handed, trying to sound as if I give a rats, I started asking whether he or she would prefer seeing their inscription while they're drinking or would they prefer to show off their inscription while they're drinking. The customer ponders the recipient's personality and decides which would be best for them, usually. One lady was so confused that she took the mug back to the office and did a survey of what everybody else thought. Good honour. Eventually I adopted the ploy that in the old days traditionally the handle should be on the left and not wanting to defy tradition most agreed. Saves time out of my life. The thing is the handle can interfere with grip 
and it's better to keep the handle out of the way of my anchoring fingers. I'm so naughty. <laughs> Sorry about the stuff up, but join me next week for actual lettering styles. Cheerio, and bye for now. <laughs>